Welcome to Rugby Tonight, the best bits. It was our final Six Nations special this week and we were focusing on all things Welsh. Tom Shanklin and Andy Powell joined us for a look ahead towards the game against England this weekend. Ben Kay and Austin Healy also joined us to talk about the rest of the Six Nations fixtures and analysis on round 15 of the Aviva Premiership. How impressed have you been with, with Wales so far? They have been impressive. They haven't really been playing that well, I don't think. I think England have been impressive as well. Um, so the two best teams in the tournament are facing each other on Saturday. So it's a huge one. I did have a phone call at, uh, at one stage. Yeah, I, no, I love this. I love this. Tell, tell me about this phone call. Well, obviously I was playing at, at Saracens and I was 19 or 20 and I'd made the first team and was playing all right. And I was in training. After training on the way back in the car, um, I was with David Flatman and my phone rang. Rings and uh, being like 19 or 20, I pick up and go, what, What's up? <laughs> and this. Uh, <laughs> we all remember that. We yeah. all did it. We, we all did it. Hopefully. Um, and this incredibly posh voice come on and it's Tom, this is, this is Clive Woodward. And I was like, Shut up. Who, who is this? Bracken, is this you? And then after about 10 seconds, uh, the realization <laughs> sets in that it's actually Clive Woodward ring me to see if I'd be, um, see if I'd be part of the uh, Six Nations squad. So. Yeah, now, very, very quickly, mm -hmm. you got another phone call from Graham Henry. Yes. Yeah. Um, you're happy with the choice you made. Could have gone a different way. I mean, it could have been... I mean, we've, we've had a little bit of fun against, I say, arts and crafts. Look at some of these images here we got up there. This is, uh, this is how it could have been. <laughs> yeah. And then, how about that, then? <laughs> well, I never take a bad photo, so... You don't, do you? No. Look absolutely marvellous. No. Absolutely marvellous. Um, but what, what went through your mind, though, when, you, when you, suddenly you find yourself in a bit of a, a tug-of-war between England and Wales? I mean, for a young man, 20 years old, the ego must have been absolutely growing by the, by the <laughs> second. It was, it was a nice confidence booster, wasn't it, to get asked to, to be part of a, a squad. But and the first thing I did was ring my dad, and he didn't really know what to say either. Um, but luckily, the next day, Graham Henry ran me. Um, I was up in training that week. I got capped by the A's, so there was no turning back. But, you know, every part of me is Welsh. All my family live there. It's, uh, it was hugely the right decision. <laughs> is that often controversial, sometimes misunderstood? Um, I'm just an easy-going lad, you know. Yeah, I like to have a bit of fun on the way, and, you know, I think sometimes rugby's taken too seriously, and, you know, you have to enjoy it, and that's, I've always done that, so <laughs> it's pretty good. But sometimes you say exactly what's on your mind. Do you kind of worry about it then and kind of go, oh, man, what did I just come up with? Yeah, well, it's backfired a few times in my career, so uh, <laughs> that's probably, yeah, that's probably the best way to put it, yeah. But with, with all that in mind, some of the antics off field has often kind of, I guess, overshadowed what you've actually achieved on it. You know, 23 Welsh... 20, yeah, 23, 23 yeah. Welsh caps, British Irish Lions, played in a World Cup. Um, how will you look back on your career? Um... If I did it all again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it one bit. I'd probably carry on and do it what I've done, so... There's a song there somewhere, isn't there? Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> was I no, no I, wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't change much. I've had a great career, and it's, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs in your career, and, you know, I've had them, but I've enjoyed it as well, so, you know... Tom, you've played against him, with him. A man you always want on your team, though, right? On and off the field. Don't change him. <laughs> Don't change him. You won't be Andy Powell otherwise. Um, yeah, <clears throat> just an incredible athlete. Burst onto the scene, didn't you, in... 2008 Man of the Match performance against South Africa. Standard. Five months ago, on a famous night in Bosnia, the Welsh football team qualified for a major tournament for the first time in 57 years. So with Welsh football now in the spotlight, where does that leave Welsh rugby as the age-old debate flares up again? What is our national sport? Is it rugby or is it football? So let's have a look at some stats. A recent survey states that 212,000 Welsh adults play football, 90,000 play golf, whilst only 70,000 Welsh adults play rugby. But what about our children? Well, the percentage of children playing rugby in school has seen a slight increase since 2011 and has plateaued at around 35%. Football, on the other hand, has seen a steady increase, 41% in 2011, 51% in 2013, up to 56% in 2015. So Gareth Bale has always said as a child he would grow up and dream of playing in a major football tournament for Wales. But what do our children dream of? Do they dream of being the next Bale or the next Warburton? As a small nation, we can't afford 
to say football this, rugby that. No. You know, we have to facilitate and encourage the kids to play as many sports for as long as they can until they have to specialise them because the crossover between the sports, as we said earlier, is massive. And that's uh, going to benefit Oh, it's going to benefit the, the kids sport, without really, the shadow yeah. of a doubt. Yeah. You know, that's what we're lucky with, with Gareth. He, he played every sport and so did Sam. Mm -hmm. You know, they played every sport until they left. But what we look <laughs> for is, is obviously the, the natural ability, but it's that dedication, attitude and commitment yeah. that makes the player. It's about squeezing the sponge and having no water in it. <laughs> I like that. It, it, I'm going to see that. But it is, you know, and, and if you have a look at some of the boys we have now that have, that have come from the school and the girls, you know, they, 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 they don't leave anything to chance. You know, the preparation is, is spot on and uh, they do their talking on the field of play, which is great role models for the kids. Jonathan Davis is, is the future of Welsh rugby. I am safe. slightly worried. We've got fantastic um, athletes and I know there was a survey done uh, through the academies and you know, strength and conditioning was world class, you know, nutritional world class. But the problem they had was um, game management and um, core, core skills were zero. Mm. And yes, you can compete on the you know physical aspect of it, but it's game decision making and skills that win you matches. And the man charged with Epping participation is former Wales captain Ryan Jones. In a way, I guess you could look at football being in the spotlight as a good thing because it, it's helping us, you, raise our game, right? I, th I think it is good for us. I think there's a lot of collaboration to be done and will be done. I think, again, the health offering for both is, is fantastic. Um, at the moment, possibly the, the format of football lends itself maybe to greater participation in that you can play five a side and two guys, two guys can turn up and put jumpers down in a park and one's in goals and one's shooting. But, you know, we, we're looking at how we can position our offering as just as attractive um, to grow it. But again, I, you know, we, we are a nation of sports fans, you know, and the success of the national football team does have a crossover into, into rugby. And likewise, you know, people, people value and thrive on the success of, of, of this and the great work that these guys are doing too. Ban contact rugby in schools, say <laughs> health experts. Ben, when you read the headlines, heard the news breaking, what was your initial reaction? Um, well, it's an emotive subject for all rugby fans, and, and the danger is that we come back and we, we belittle everything and you know, because we're so upset about it. But I, what I would like to see is some actual statistics. Now, I know that they, the, the people who've written this letter have said the RFU should be providing the statistics, but you can't go out and say ban contact from schoolboy rugby until the statistics are there. I personally don't think that's the answer. I don't think it's going to make a difference. It's about risk against um, you know, reward, really. And, 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 of course, there's an element of risk to rugby. There's an element of risk to hockey and cricket with hard balls. There's an element of risk. My, my son broke his arm falling down the stairs. It was an accident. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really did, but we he puts his clothes away now, though, doesn't he? <laughs> he puts his clothes away. It, we didn't ban him from going upstairs. There's an element of risk <laughs> in, a lo in a lot of things that children do. Part of it is learning and growing up. Yes, we don't want any, um, any injuries that are preventable um, not being prevented, but equally, we can't just wrap our children up in cotton wool and, and otherwise, you know, they're, they're going to have problems later in life, in my opinion, because they're not going to have the character when things... I think we have to delve life. deeper into the data as well. When you look closely, and I've done this now, I've had a proper look at the letter that was sent, all the experts, uh, where all the sources were. Their sources are so dated. Some of them go back to 1976 and schoolboy injuries at that stage. The scrum laws caused a lot of injuries in those days when you used to be able to push and you two will have pushed against each other as far as you want. They changed that. You can only push a metre now in schoolboy rugby. That really changed the face of how many injuries we saw. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching Rugby Tonight, the best bits. And don't forget to hit subscribe. There's also still time to apply for free tickets for all our upcoming shows by emailing audience at rugbytonight.com.